And so our next game, our next game is the remainder. And this is act one of this particular visual novel. And it does have, and act one is free to play. And it is available on PC as well as itch.io. So again, if you end up liking what you see of this, if you click that link there or at any time type in GOTW, it's going to bring up a list of all of the games that I am covering, that I've covered this week and will be covering this week. The platforms those games are available on. The price in USD, if it has a price, and the actual link to get to the game. So, and again, I like to take the time to thank the developer and the publishers of the remainder for reaching out to me and bringing their game to my attention. Um, I ended up receiving an email and the other game we just played, the um, Entravenous, was a part of this um, game deal here too. So, um, again, a big shout out and thank you to the developers and publishers for providing me um, with the information about this game. So let's go ahead, we're gonna start and see what, what happens. So how to play. Click anywhere on the screen to progress with the story. Choices you make along the way will determine your fate. If you miss something, you can read it again in the history. I like games like this, where, you're, where your choices matter. Once you discover a letter or a journal entry, you can find it in the gallery. Okay, so hover over the diamond to reveal a menu item. The story will include description. Okay, so trigger warning. The story will include descriptions of violence, death, and suicide. All right, I'll, I will definitely check that out, digital. As well as mentions of my altering substances and activities. It's recommended for a mature audience. So this is a mature game. So we're gonna do 15 minutes of this. Act one. Waves crash in the distance. Cicadas chirp? Or I, that's not how it's pronounced. Oh my goodness, I can't pronounce it. A breeze um, caresses our hair. The sun warms our skin. All is well. We're sitting on a rug laid on the grass. Hands linked together. Our singing voices float up in unison. My chest vibrates. I can feel the air in our bodies move as one. The space between us hums with power. You guys can't hear anything. I just realized that. Uh, I close my eyes and smile, savoring the feeling. My dream is coming true just a little longer. Their singing falters and I peer at them curiously, trying to hide my annoyance. Why did you stop? Yeah, why did you stop? They squeeze my hand with a smile and shake their head. Their skin is cold and clammy. Huh? What has gotten into you? I ask. Gestures, they gesture at the sky with an outstretched hand. I look up. The sun is ducked behind a cloud, drops a witness fall, safely patting the ground. You don't see it yet, do you? I frown, still peering up. What do you mean? When I lower my gaze, they're not there. Pressing my lips together, I stand up and search around me. Where did you go? 
It's pouring now. Why can I not pronounce this insect's name? <laughs> the why can I not pronounce that? Are silent. Wind rips at my clothes. I look at my hands. Thick, warm, red. So blood. A sweet scent fills my nostrils. I venture a lick. Metallic. Greasy. What in the Lord's name is happening? Darkness falls. Soon I can barely make out the silhouette of my hands. A sense of urgency grips me. I run to the tower and throw open the door, shouting, Where are you? Empty halls stretch before me, echo echoing my question. In the far end, a figure is walking away into the dark. Hey, wait! Shouting, I run after them, feet pounding upon the sticky wet stones, echoing loudly, squelch, squelch, squelch. I said, wait! What was their name again? Ugh, why can't I remember? Why are you surprised? What? My, my. <laughs> Look at you, the voice chuckles. Falling short where it counts again. I ignore it and keep running. Sink the name. I'll know them when I find them. I grab the slippery doorknob and barge into the room. Nothing. Another door. Nothing. I run my hands over my hair, fingers digging into my scalp. What the? I recoil when I realize the sticky stuff is smeared all over. I wipe it on my clothes, but it won't come off. Sink this. I curse. Clench my teeth and storm through yet another door. Look at the poor great Magus, all alone in their tall stone prison. Shut up! My voice echoes back as I stand in an empty room, hot breaths rasp in my throat. Why was I running so hard? Why am I so tired? Why was I struggling? My legs tremble and I sink to my knees. It's all right. Everything is fine. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter now. Eyelids heavy, comforting numbness envelopes me. I close my eyes and crumble to the floor. Just for a moment, everything's fine. The sea in every direction, endless, a diamond dusting of moonlight across the surface above me. I look down into the depth of a pressure against my chest as the darkness stirs. A star, then two, then a constellation glitters into life they approach. The darkness was not the bottomless sea, but the body of an enormous fish, its silhouette filling my entire view. A gaping mouth splits open from her from the horizon to her, from horizon to horizon, sorry. A deeper black within, approaching, buzzing. The Bronagator hag Sarotra comes for me. I should be afraid. Her mouth now all encompassing, bloats out the last remainder of feeble illumination around me. I should be afraid. Why am I not? The mouth shuts with a distant clang, a flash of lightning across the eyelid sky. Come on, wake up. Prickling light in the comforting darkness, a rumbling rises and falls in an anti-music rhythm. Calm coolness gives way to crushing heat. A blanket of boulders smothers me. Hey, you all right? Did you hear me? My eyes struggle open to a face. <sighs> no, go away. Someone grips my shoulders and squeeze. Still a bit out of it, eh? The metallic and greasy buzzing sounds crescendos. In my mouth taste of iron, a hand is laid upon my forehead. I open my eyes again. It's easier this time. But the rest of my body is still heavy as stones. I can't budge a hair. Hmm, feverish. say 
grenade real quick. Hmm. Feverish, but no obvious wounds. You'll be fine, I dare say. Their brows furry deeper. Stay still and listen to me carefully. Your spell has gone very, very wrong. It's going to kill us, and I haven't got much time to fix it. After a pause, they pat my hand, as if an afterthought. What are you talking about? What spell? I work my stiff tongue. Don't worry about that. Just stay put. I'll deal with it. They turn and stride off. Hey, wait, what's happening? A hoarseness burns my throat and I wheeze. I peer around trying to get a hold of my surroundings. I must be dizzy still. Everything's spinning. Why are the books flying? I squeeze my eyes shut again. This is not happening. I'll wake up soon. Sounds trickle in, rustling, clinking, a storm raging outside, a guttural blood buzzing. How can I sleep like this? Annoyed, I drag myself sluggishly to my feet. An urge to gag rises, rubbing my throbbing temples, tasting a foulness in my mouth, I force down the vial. What did I do last night? The insensual buzzing. I rub my eyes again to clear them and look for the source of the sound. As I catch the sight of it, a cold terror creeps up my spine, a pulsing, churning thing is suspended in the air like space is swallowing itself. Waves of moist, brilliant heat spew from it. The transparency, the symmetry. Yeah, the visuals in this are really nice, actually, though. They're trippy, but they're really nice. The stench, the singing, breath catching in my throat, I freeze. What in Laura's name is that? Shapes huddle beneath the grotesque thing in the air. As I step around to get a better look, the resolves into figures. Midnight silent and still as bones. The white-haired person who woke me earlier stands still. Another person is curled up on the floor, their face a mask of anguish. The emblem of a high magus hangs around their neck. The image of an eel coils around their arm. Why do I know these symbols? White hair's hands are raised in a peculiar gesture toward the vortex looming overhead. Hey, I whimper, what are you doing? What is that thing? It looks like they are frozen in place. Hello, I ask again. No movement. Hello, Nest and Dows. Welcome on in. Doing pretty good. Um checking out the remainder here for a bit before we move into our other two games for the evening but how are you this evening i hope you're feeling well i saw you weren't feeling well for a couple of days so i hope you're you're feeling a little bit better or at least taking it easy i bump into something and look to see a couch beside it there's a table on which cups lay about like drunkard drunkards inkwell quills and crumpled papers are strewn across the table and the stones beneath. A few bottles are still dripping from the mouths. Dark red spots splatter across the floor. I'm glad to hear you're feeling better. A crash from somewhere else in the cavernous chamber pierces the silence, jolting me. I duck behind the couch, heart pounding fast. There comes a bang, sound of glass shattering, shouting. A cacophony reverberates. River, 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 oh my goodness. Re. <laughs> I'm gonna skip that word. I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of it to read it. Painfully from the walls around me. I clutch my ears. River breaks. I can't pronounce it. Are there people fighting here? Please, let me wake up already. This is not funny anymore. 
As abruptly as they came, the sound dies down. Is it over? Clapping eyes shut, I try to block out the buzzing, praying, let this be over soon. Let this be over soon. Let this. How did you get there? I nearly jump at the voice. The white-haired person is back, slumped next to the couch. Head lulled, a hand to their shoulder, breath shallow. Shallow. What? I just saw you over there. I turn to see the same person still in the spot under the vortex, and my mouth hangs open. Well, why are there two of you? I turn back to ask and see something drip from them. The glistening fluid shimmers and vanishes after it hits the floor. Are you melting? Uh, I back away a step. I heard shouting. Is there someone else here? They try to speak, but wince instead. Eyes closed. Throat bobbing, spitting out something black, and then resting their head back. They flash a sly grin and whisper, yes, but now it wishes it never set foot. Violent coughing interrupts them. More fluid drips down and evaporates. I wrinkle my nose. I see, I mean, I don't see. What in the death is going on here? What does it look like, they say. I glance around the room with a scrawl, taking care to avoid the flowing thing. Like the end of the world? Another wince. They lift the figure at point. What about that? Do you recognize it? I realize they mean the vortex and avert my eyes. No, Dervarnia, no, absolutely not. Should I? I can't resist a shudder. They grimace. Sake me. Not even that? Your handiwork? Excuse me? I scoff. You heard me. The thing's here because of you. The abyss of the var, a door to the last place you ever want to be. Make no mistake. Their eyes widen with fear and their mouth curves in disgust. Curiosity rising, I push myself upright and study the scene again. Nope. I think I would remember doing something like that. <laughs> Why is this character so sassy? <laughs> the unmoving figure catch my sight. You still didn't tell me why there are two of you, or who that other person is on the floor. They gesture at the prone figure. But <laughs> they are all just sassy. Bit slow on the uptake, aren't we? That's you, the one who caused all this. A great magus, farseer, said. Savior of the Haran Square, prodigy of the age, so on and so forth. They're looking directly at me now. Tell me you remember at least your name. My name? Yeah, we're, we're gonna go with Vin. We're Vin. Is it not gonna let me? Okay, yeah, okay, so yeah, we're gonna be Vin. The words tickle at the inside of my head. Megus then. They say weakly, not to slight a dire situation, but it is somewhat amusing to see yourself like this, no? Amuse? Try skeptical, even if I believe you, that I'm this then character that still doesn't explain who's lying on the floor there. The stranger shakes their head and chuckles, then tilts their head limply toward an onet, ornet <laughs> mirror mendering through the air nearby. Easy if you go see yourself. I roll my eyes, step to the mirror, and pull off its velvet cover. Show me how I look. Show me how I look. I'm, I'm a they. Because I don't want to say they're female because they could be male or female. So I'm a they. Is this me? Yes, that is me. What I see leaves me stunned. The figure in the mirror is the split image of the person on the floor. I turn to look with wide eyes, then back at the mirror again. Every last detail, down to the small pieces of metal embedded in my skin, which I'm only now noticing. It's all identical. Then just for a breath, the eel on my arm seems to wiggle. Okay, but I blink and it's still again. I feel lightheaded. This is not right. But 
how how I'm in two how am I in two places at once? I turn to the figure next to me. Are we dead? Is this the afterlife? And why do you know things when I don't? How is this fair? And just who are you? They laugh soundlessly. This is too rich. You don't remember my name either. Your Huh, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to call them Rex. Let's call them Rex. I like Rex for some odd reading. You know what? Actually, I'm going to call them Risk. I'm going to name them after my Starfinder character. Which, ironically, I'll get into my Starfinder character because in Starfinder, I actually um, play a... Um, technically, she... She was once, she was transgender. She was once a dude and became a woman. So I play a transgender character in Starfinder. Um, another fit of coughing, not even close. You must have hit your head quite severely. Worried, I run a hand over my scalp. There aren't any holes. I don't remember hitting it, but that's just how it would be if I did hit it, isn't it? My voice trails off. Hmm, how, sh how shall I say this? Eyes closed and lips parted. Their voice is barely a whisper now. The name's Ilair, your partner. Don't know what you did. Found you like this. They push out the words with effort. Okay, so they're their partner. I don't know if they mean as in romantic partner or like their partner as in we work together. I lean closer to listen. A ritual must have gone astray and set loose the abyss of our stripping away your memories. I did what I could. You'd be gone otherwise. They're still silent for a long stretch. I nudged them. Are you still with me? They open their eyes again and struggle to lift a hand and point toward the other side of the room, but it flops to the floor. Sink me. They're getting so quiet I have to put my ear next to their mouth to hear them. Warm breath tickles me. Blood rushes in my ear. Your desk. Look in your journal. Find the spell. Circular gate. Black powder. Mantra. Only way to save. No time. Go. Quit. They slump to the floor. Holding my breath, I wait. Heart beat like a hammer in my skull. Thump, thump. The buzzing feels the world be silent in between. Resonance of torment. I drive a thumb into my temple, crushing one pain with another. A futile effort. Hey, hey, are you alive? I reach a hand to their shoulder. My hand passes through them. I pull away in shock and watch open mouth as Alaire's body melts into sticky, transparent strands. A few breaths later, they're no more than a shimmering puddle. And I think that is a good spot to stop this visual novel. <laughs> so if you're interested in what happens in this story, you can pick up the remainder on Steam for PC or itch.io and it is free to play and this is Act 1. Act 2 actually comes out this month. Um, so if you like what you saw of this so far, definitely go pick it up. I'm definitely really interested in it. <laughs> um, and I do want to read more of this offline because I want to know what's going on. Again, the game or the visual novel does have a trigger warning because it does deal with things such as violence, suicide, and things like that. So do be forewarned. Um, but other than that, yeah, this, I love the visuals in this. Like, 
lately I've been on this um, indie art trading card site and it reminds me of some of the artwork I see on there so um, overall I thought this was a great visual novel so I, I definitely will probably read more of this but again this is the remainder act one and it is free to play and you can pick this up on pc or itch.io and i would like to take the time to thank the developer for reaching out to me and bringing their game to my attention